<laughs> uh, I suggest everybody watch this video. You know, I'm all about using your camera, getting out and using it, believe it or not. But some people are all about the math. So if some people like math, what we're going to do is we're going to use the math and then we're going to lay it hard and heavy. Okay? So we're only going to look at the facts and you with your own two hands and your keyboard can verify these facts after watching this video and then you'll make a determination upon things. Now apparently everybody is an ambient light photographer. Sensor saturation will let you do anything with any sensor. Obviously field of view is important so let's take a look at some bare raw hard facts here. Now it depends on the type of photography that you do obviously so. So first let's ask ourselves one question. Why is it that some, actually quite a few, National Geographic photographers, this is only one example, are using a $13,000 lens on a $700 camera. I'll let you think about that one just for five seconds. Why are people that, and they get this gear for free or at least unlimited free rental, why would somebody be using a $13,000 Nikkor 600mm f4 on like a $700 Nikon D7200, which by the way is a crop sensor 24 megapixel camera. We are soon going to find out the answer to this. Now this right here is a hardcore fact. Everything we have listed here is a hardcore fact that you yourself can look up after watching this video. And then we're going to take the math and then we're going to turn it into a weapon. Not literally, okay? So, people like math? Guess who I'm talking about? We're going to use math, girlfriend. Okay, so let's talk about the math. 24 megapixel full frame sensor over here, right? 24 megapixel crop sensor. Now, it doesn't matter if we're talking about a Fuji okay or a Sony okay we're not talking about backside illuminated sensor or a conventional sensor let's just talk about a 24 megapixel that would be like a Nikon D750 the new Sony a7 III a 24 megapixel sensor it doesn't matter if it's a Sony 24 megapixel crop sensor or a 24 megapixel Fujifilm sensor okay all of these over here are the exact same sensor. All of these over here are also the same sensor. We're going to look at them at three different levels. Now over here, it has been said by somebody else on YouTube that invariably so, the full frame sensor in some performance is twice as good as the crop sensor. Now when it comes to a larger sensor that has larger eyeballs, it does invariably and undeniably have better low light capability and better dynamic range because of the large eyeballs on the sensor. Okay, It does, however, have worst crop performance. Now let's say we have these two cameras and any lens. Well, let's just say our $13,000 lens here. Okay, And we are out in the field taking a picture of Angelina Jolie from a thousand yards away. Right? Or like say a speckle-breasted woodpecker. The ultra-rare red and purple striped speckle-breasted woodpecker. Okay? So let's draw our little speckle-breasted woodpecker here. Right? Now, same thing on our crop sensor. Now, invariably, if we're using the same lens at the exact same distance, okay? Same lens, standing in the same spot, standing in the same distance, the projection from that same lens will be the exact same size on our full-frame sensor as on our crop sensor. Oh my goodness, now here, for sports, action, wildlife, birding, and photojournalism, where the full-frame sensor at 24 megapixels is 2.25 times worse than our crop sensor. How so? Let's take a look at a 24 megapixel sensor. We have to divide that by 2.25. Now, check the internet if you like on the math on this because I'm 100% accurate. A 24 megapixel sensor over 2.25 equals Oh my god! Oh my god! 10.5, 10.6, excuse me, megapixels. Now we take the large eyeballs of our full frame sensor and we stick it in DX crop mode, like we do down here, because Angelina Jolie from a thousand yards away, or a speckle breasted woodpecker, or whatever the hell it is that has to be cropped. And this is what people in sports action, wildlife and birding and photojournalism and other forms of photography do because they can't get closer. You can't get closer to Angelina Jolie because her security guards will thump your ass and the speckle breasted woodpecker will see you and it will fly off and you'll miss the shot. So you got to take the shot with your $13,000 expensive lens of the rare speckle and purple breasted polka dotted woodpecker at a thousand yards, right? Exact same size, 
projection on a crop sensor, exact same size. This is not my opinion, this is undeniable. Now, it is the case, since we are dealing with huge eyeballs here in DX crop mode, that 24 megapixel sensor in crop mode becomes a 10.6, oh my god, that sucks, a 10.6 megapixel sensor. For example, also to the Nikon D810. Okay, wonderful. Well, that's a 36 megapixel sensor. Yes, but in crop mode, over 2.25, it is a 16 megapixel sensor. Oh my God. Now we're not talking about better low light capability because Angelina Jolie and the speckle breasted striped polka dotted woodpecker like to sit out in daylight. So you got plenty of sensor saturation. So you got no problem with lighting. Yeah, absolutely no problem. But now we have a 10.6 megapixel crop on our speckle-breasted woodpecker and this means we have less translational information per square millimeter of sensor than we do on our crop sensor. You see the little tiny eyeballs over here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a 24 megapixel sensor. Okay. 24 megapixel. This is also a 24 megapixel but it's a full frame. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now this one, while it has worse low lighting capability by stop, depending on what it is, conventional sensor, backside illuminated sensor, worse low light performance, worse dynamic range, not by much, very, very little. It has superior cropability. Now listen closely, boys and girls. This is why, and you can look this up if you don't believe me, Ooh, National Geographic photographers that get free gear rental and many times free gear are using a $13,000 lens on a really inexpensive crop sensor camera. And it's like, well, why wouldn't this person use like a Nikon D810? Because a Nikon D810, boys and girls, in crop mode is 16 megapixels. Now your National Geographic photographer, if they're like a wildlife photographer, are oftentimes taking pictures of stuff they can't get any damn closer to, okay? That means that this huge full frame sensor is not using all this crap out here. All this becomes extraneous sensor. Absolutely. Not my opinion. This is a hardcore, undeniable fact, boys and girls. Hardcore. You like the math in photography? You want the math? You got the math, girlfriend. This is the math. This is the math. This means, are you listening closely? Whoa, 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 whoa. This means that our full frame sensor for sports action, wildlife, birding photography, photojournalism, and other things where you have to crop the hell out of the shot is 2.25 times worse because this huge sensor with these huge eyeballs on it which performs wonderfully for portraiture and low light and high SO sucks for cropping the hell out of your shot. This is not my opinion, boys and girls. Check it on the internet. Ask anybody you want. Say, hey, is that fat, bold, tattooed guy right in this video? It's like, I'm afraid he is. I'm afraid, unfortunately, he is. I don't like him, but he's got his math correct. Yes, boys and girls. This is the math. This is that huge arena where the crop sensor sensor, crop sensor camera is performing. Let's write it down here. 2.25 times better better yay big happy face for the national geographic photographer with a thirteen thousand dollar lens using the tiny crop sensor camera yes 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 indeed you want the bat you want the math you got the math there's some people out there just about the math oh let's measure blah, blah, blah. oh one over five expo whatever it's two times better yes for low light and dynamic range the full frame sensor with the big eyeballs is better, but for croppability, yes, the crop sensor camera is 2.25 times better. The truth of the reality is, between the two, it's kind of negligible in all instances, okay? But this is the math. You see, we've squeezed 24 megapixels on a sensor that is 2.25 times smaller than the exact same number of megapixels on a much bigger sensor. And that 24 megapixel sensor in crop mode, you might even have to crop in further, like even to like to micro four thirds size, because that little birdie is tiny. That 24 megapixel sensor in crop mode is 10.6 megapixels. My God, 10.6 megapixels. Why that's even suckier than a Nikon D3 from the year 2008, which is 12 megapixels. Yes, indeed. Yes. That, folks, is what we call the math.
as told to you by someone that knows what the hell is going on when it comes to digital photography. Because when you want to talk about the math, you actually have to know what you're talking about. And there we go. Here's the math. Check it yourself. Like it, don't like it, doesn't matter. I'm all about the facts. That's the facts. Look it up. Tony.